Hello and welcome to Maltbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and this is Whiskey Review 109. What I have for you today is a single malt scotch whiskey from the Speyside region. It's also a no age statement whiskey. It's a whiskey that's on the affordable scale of the budget. It comes in the form of this. This is the Glen Keith Distillery Edition Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Now, Glen Keith is not a name that you see very often. It's usually used for blending purposes. There's the bottle, guys. So, this is effectively a supermarket whiskey, right? I say that because you can pick it up online, however you will find this on the, store, on the shelves of Tesco, Morrison's and in my case where I pick this up, Co-op, so the little cooperative shops that we have here in the UK. This is bottled at 40%, it is chill filtered, it will be full of added colouring because this cost me the princely sum of 20 English pounds, down from 25. So already there you can kind of gather the sort of like market that this is being aimed at. This is a supermarket shelf whiskey. This is there to provide something a little bit different um, next to the either usual suspects or the supermarket own brand bottlings because it still plays around that price point and it is on offer quite a lot. Now, Glen Keith is a distillery in the Perna Ricard oh, uh, stable. As I said at the start of the review, it's a distillery that is usually used for blends. It's, you know, you will find independent bottlings of it. However, this, as it stands, is their only official bottling in the market today, as of today. That could well change, however, this is it. So their first kind of foray into the single malt market is a no age statement, chill filtered, 40 percenter. Now, it's got the usual bump on the front, which kind of winds me up a bit. Some, you know, all the stuff about master craftsmen, we've got the finest traditional oak, uh, you know, just that kind of stuff. And let's face it, guys, if you look at a bottle of whiskey and they have to say that sort of stuff, let's just get this out of the way. Just ignore it. They all say it. It's all a load of crap. The finest hand-selected oak casks. If you've ever been to a distillery, all right, they pick the casks because they have to. What do you think the whiskey's going to go in? You know, I mean, it's, it's things like that that really wind me up. Anyway, never mind. On to the whiskey. So again, it will have added colouring, so it doesn't matter here nor there. It's quite a, a non, an inoffensive colour, shall we say. It's not too dark and it's not light enough to scare people off that seem to associate dark with rich, rich equals good. People are sometimes scared of lighter whiskies because they either think it will be harsh or stringent or too young or whatever. That's, that's just not the case. However, for this bottling, it has got to appeal to the masses, guys. It's there on the supermarket shelves. It's for people just browsing through when they've got a load of other stuff in their shopping trolleys and baskets. So, on the nose. I think the overarching thing for me here is sweetness, it is cloyingly sweet in varying levels. Uh, you've initially got some quite nice tart green apple at the front. You've then got dolly mixture sweets. You then have candy floss, or cotton candy as it's called in the US, uh, and probably further afield. So it's very, very sweet already. You've got that tart apple note kind of cutting through it a little bit, but for me it is tooth achingly sweet. It's very, very sweet. I can feel my dentist rubbing his hands. 
just waiting for me to drink this. I appreciate there's no sugar in it uh, anymore, but uh, you know. Oh, see, neither went for it. Right. There's a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of toffee. A little bit of biscuit, like maybe a, a digestive biscuit, um, and it's still quite. A, it's got a little bit of a spirity undertone as well in there. It's not. It's not bad. I've had worse already. Let's put it that way. For twenty quid, especially. I don't think, and I might as well get it out of the way, this is not going to be a world beater. This is not going to be a whiskey that you know, you're know you going to celebrate the birth of your first child with, or you know a promotion or whatever it may be. I can already tell this is a whiskey that is going to be an everyday drinker. At the end of the day, again, it's priced between 20 to 25 pounds. You know, let's, let's not get our hopes up too much. You can, however, find some very, very good quality whiskies in this price range. So let's see what it's got on the palate. Okay. So the mouthfeel was very, very thin. Very thin. However, you then get a really nice very warming, spicy hit at the front of that palette. The, the finish, as I'm talking, is becoming very, very charming. It's got a very nice sort of like chocolatey note to it. Again, it's still a little bit sweet. However, it's not the same sort of sweetness that I experienced on the nose, where it's more sort of like upfront sugars. Like I said, it was that sort of like candy floss, cotton candy, uh, you know, something probably arguably like a boiled sweet, and uh, yeah, this is more a little well, it's a little bit richer, if I'm honest, on the palate. I think that's probably the best way to describe it. Again, the mouthfeel is a little bit of a letdown. Going back to what I said on the nose about those apples, I'm now getting apple pie on the palate. So you've got that really nice sort of like crusty pastry, arguably with some brown sugar on the top of it. You've got those vanillas. You've got the biscuit that I mentioned before. Again, the finish, short to medium, but it's getting chocolatey, which I find quite pleasant. It's going back to the nose after Tasting that, I'm not picking up much else other than what I did before. It's not bad, you know, it's quite nice, quite pleasant. Inoffensive, but quite pleasant. I, I, I think this is, this is a whiskey that you can just sort of sit down, pour one of them, and just sit back and not think not think too much about it, you know? Oh, for God's sake, I've seen something else now. You see, oh, it's just stuff like that, matured in traditional oak. It has to be. In order to be Scotch whiskey, it has to be matured in oak. So, yeah, anyway, that's, that's something else. Um, I was going off on one again then, wasn't I? But I think this is sort of a very atypical example of things like that, where they use a lot of words to try and hit you. Things like, again, Master Craftsman, uh, the fact it's distillery edition, however, this is on general sale. You don't have to go to the distillery to get it. They've used the things that they've used in capital letters are words like smooth, finest, uh, traditional oak, orchard fruits, apple to be fair, and rich toffee. Nailed it. Um, but yeah, again, this is if you do see it on the shelf and it's on on offer. Do I regret spending 20 quid on it? Not really. Um, I don't, to be fair, for 20 quid. It's, a, it's not a bad little drop. However, in the back of my mind, what I kind of get is, at this point in my whiskey journey, what could I have used that 20 quid towards? Will this bottle, as a full bottle, at 20 quid, give me as much enjoyment 
as arguably stepping up an extra 20 quid for something a little bit more special. The jury's out on that one, but that is something to think about. I think the important thing with whiskey drinking, you know, it's all well and good me sitting here telling you about bottles and giving you various notes, which are, again, an individual thing. You will not probably get the same things that I do. The thing is, you need to sort of drink less, drink better. You know, it's all about that. It's quality over quantity. So, don't go and fill your cupboard up with these. Maybe get one, give it a shot. If you like it, feel free, crack on, get some more. But ultimately, drink less, drink better. Thank you very much for watching, guys. See you soon.